everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. Today I have something a little bit different for you. I was in Joanne's the other day and I saw these fun custom doormat projects. So I grabbed one, I chose a fun cloud and I also grabbed one of their stencil packs and I thought we could create one together. Now, I didn't have any outdoor acrylic paints in my stash, but what I did have was some of these Law DIY paints that Plaid had sent me. And I did a little experiment. I had an old doormat from Christmas that I knew I wouldn't be using again. And I painted some on, I did an experiment, and it seemed to last up pretty well. And we've had snow and all sorts this week and the paint was still there. So that's what I'm gonna be using on today's project. So I've already centered up my stencil. It says Hello Spring on here. I'm going to tape it down with some masking tape. Now, if you couldn't find a stencil that you liked, you could also create one using your Cricut, your Silhouette, your Scan and Cut, all of those things. And I'm just using my favorite purple masking tape that I always use. I'm just going to center on here. Now it's not going to probably be a bit tricky to stick because of the coir matting on here, but it seems to be holding up pretty well. And it's more that I just don't want it to move too far. So I'm gonna stick this down like so. And I'm also just gonna kind of go over to the table a little bit. It's more that we don't want it to go too far on us. So I'm just taping this down like this. and I'm gonna tape it down over here too. Now I'm also gonna lay out some kitchen towel for after because I need somewhere to put my stencil when we're done. So I'm just uncoining a little bit of kitchen towel and I'm gonna pop it onto my surface over here and that's just for after. So I just wanna be nicely prepped for afterwards and I'm gonna use this blue color. So let's start with that. This is called does it have a name? It doesn't have a name on it, but it's called Perfect. Uh, it's called Distressed, I think, looking at all the others. So I'm just gonna screw off the lid. I'm gonna pop some on a paper plate. I just give it a little bit of a shape beforehand. I could have gone black, but I thought, well, it's spring. We might want to be a little bit more springy. So let's see, what shall we use? I'm gonna go with this. These are the Lord DIY brushes that you've seen me use lots. And I'm gonna bring my paint a little bit closer because I am the person who would dribble it everywhere. So I'm just going to start by kind of stippling because I don't want it to go under my stencil too far. And everything will be linked in the video description. Joanne's do click and pick up so you can pick it up in store, which makes it nice and easy. And I'll link up on everything from Plaid too because you can also order it online. So I'm just stippling because I don't want to go under my stencil. You could of course use your pixie spray on this as well. It's really easy. So I'm just moving along, making sure I got a reasonably even coat. You could do ombre effects with your paint depending on how adventurous you were feeling. I'm just gonna go with one color for this. And you can see. And I'm trying to keep within the constraints of my stencil. So I'm gonna go all the way along until I've finished up my hello. Once you've gone all over your design, one thing I didn't mention is being careful around some of these other items. And what you can do if you're worried about filling these in accidentally, you could just put some masking tape over and cover them up. So you could have just added a little bit of tape here and you wouldn't have had to worry about them. But I was just careful going around them. But now I've added my Hello Spring. I want to add this little sprig underneath. But one thing I'm gonna show you first of all is we're gonna lift up our stencil and we're going to pop it onto our kitchen towel. And I've just picked up my other stencil, so I'm gonna peel that off. But what we're gonna do is pop it down onto our kitchen towel. And we're just going to clean this off a little bit because if I have got any paint on the underside of my stencil, I want to make sure it's not going to get on to 
any other areas of my mat. But doesn't that look so pretty already? I'm going to grab a baby wipe just out of here. And I'm just going to give this a quick wipe. Just taking off any like super excess of paint. And it just gives it a little bit of a clean. Really easy paint to clean up. I love working with these Law DIY paints but I'm just making sure there's no huge excess. And I'm gonna lay another piece of kitchen towel on top. Just keeps our paint wet, just like this. And if you just add another piece of kitchen towel on top, it makes sure that we don't have anything on the bottom. So I've taken off most of the paint we've got, move that piece out of the way. But what we can check is that we don't have any huge amount of paint on the bottom of our stencils. So now, when I want to add this sprig underneath, which I'm gonna add somewhere over here, I'm just gonna put a little bit of kitchen towel there. I'm just gonna lay this here. And I'm gonna make sure it's in the middle of my hollow spring. Round about here. And again, we're just gonna press down our masking tape. I'm going to pop my towel underneath just because I don't want any of that excess paint. And this is how I kind of avoid contamination around my project. Now you could wait until everything is completely dry, but when I've got my paints out, I like to just kind of keep painting. And my little wreath underneath, I think I'm going to do in this pinky swear. What fun names they have these paints. So again, I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit of paint. And I'm going to grab another paintbrush and then pull this over and I'm just going to pop this through again. Again, I'm going to do the same thing and I can just pop it on top there. And because I have the kitchen towel under that over underneath rather that open area, I don't have to worry if I get any paint strings. And you'll notice I'm kind of daubing rather than painting because I don't want to get any paint underneath that stencil area. So I can just kind of press it down and then daub underneath. You could also use a sponge brush, but I kind of like the way the bristles allow you to get in between the coir on the mat and give you a nice solid image. Like this particularly in some of these kind of finer areas on a vine like this one. And you can see I'm kind of angling my brush backwards and forwards, which is how the vine is made. And that's how I'm getting in between those areas. So again, kind of just going with the direction of the leaf. So it goes one way, the other way, backwards and forwards. And that's allowing me to get into those detailed areas. This is gonna look so pretty. Just. And then what you can do is as long as you don't move your stencil, you can have a little peek if you need some more paint. And if it's a little bit finer, you might find you do need more paint because the coir is really absorbent too. So again, I'm just going back, same direction, same direction, same direction. And you see how I'm kind of angling my brush into there. Just making sure I have a little peek. And that little peak, make sure you don't, of course, move your stencil, but it will just let you know if you need a bit more paint under there. And with a lighter color, you do tend to need a bit more paint too. Dark colors are a little bit bolder, so you can just think about that when you're picking out your colors too. But isn't it fun because you could put Hello Spring from the Smith family or you could put um, Established and then put your marriage date. I mean, you could be really custom 
which I think is the fun part about this. Just like that. And again, I'm gonna move my plate out the way and we're gonna lift this up. And so we have our nice little sprig under there. And again, I'm gonna pop it back down onto here. Make sure I don't have any excess on there. And then you can choose your extra items. So I really want to have some butterflies on mine. So again, I'm gonna make sure that I take any excess off the bottom of my vine. So I've got the kitchen towel underneath and I'm gonna press the kitchen towel on top. This one's still pretty wet because it's not a small, not a large design rather. I'm making sure that I've removed the excess. And you'll notice I get quite a lot of paint off the bottom of the stencil. So it's really important to get that off because otherwise I'd have popped this stencil down elsewhere on my design and then I'd have ended up with all that paint excess, which wouldn't have been fun. We wouldn't want that elsewhere in our design. I'm gonna pop these into the bin. So let's see, what else do we want to put on our design? I think we want some butterflies. Let's think about this. So again, I'm gonna be a little bit extra cautious just because I know there was a lot of paint under there. So I'm just gonna pop some kitchen towel, but let's pick out some butterfly colors. Hmm. There are some really gorgeous colors in this, but I think some purple butterflies. There are also some really fun galaxy colors in this Lore DIY range. So you could add some little touches of glitter. Maybe we'll do that too. So let's squeeze out some of that glitter onto our plate because hey, who doesn't want a glittery doormat? And I'm gonna add some Don't Be Jelly on there as well. So we're gonna have some butterflies flapping around on our piece. I'm gonna get rid of our paint brushes over there. And now we're gonna add these on. So this is your other option is to work with a foam dauber. So you can kind of just dip this in like this. I'm gonna just pull my sleeve up. And again, you can just kind of dab in like this. So when you have a larger area, these foam brushes are another option. And I'll make sure everything as always is linked in that video description for you in the order that we use it in the video. So you have lots of different options. And I always find when working with different tools and things, it's very kind of personal opinion as to what you like working with. So this allows you to get a bit more paint down at each time. Personally, I like working with a paintbrush. I find it gives me a bit more control. But this is another option that you have. And I also like holding down my stencil just to make sure it doesn't move on me, particularly on a surface like this because masking tape can struggle to stick. Now there are outdoor acrylic paints available too, but as I say, I didn't have those in my stash. So I was utilizing what I had and these seem to hold up on my nice test piece really, really well. And I'm gonna grab a paintbrush and get in there too. And I have these beautiful Lord DIY ones, which are gonna work perfectly. Just like this. And so I'm gonna brush in. I'm gonna add a few different butterflies in here. Like this. And then what you can do is take a separate brush and you can go in with some of that glittery paint. And this will just add a little bit of extra sparkle. So when those porch lights come on of an evening, you will get some shimmer appear in that doormat. So I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna add a few different butterflies around my doormat. So 
much fun. I hope you've enjoyed watching along at home and you feel inspired to create your own spring doormat or maybe any occasion. So let's take a look at the finished article. So we have our beautiful butterflies here complete with their glitter details in them, aren't they gorgeous? Fluttering along there. And then I added a watering can at the bottom here. I did some really crude measurements. I kind of just did what it's three fingers in and then I did the same on the other side. I ended up adding a flower in the middle of that wreath section at the bottom here, which really finished it off. And then I added some wellies on this side too and that beautiful hollow spring in the middle. So the only thing left is to put it on my doormat outside. Doesn't it gorgeous on the step and complete my spring? door feature. I think it looks fab and you can see that on your screen right now and I hope you're feeling inspired to give it a try at home. All the links are in the video description and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell whilst you're here. We have daily tips, tricks, techniques, tutorials, hauls, all of those fun things at Hedgehog Hollow and we always have some exclusive coupon codes for you so you can check those out in the video description or go to thehedgehoghollow.com to sign up for our weekly Friday newsletter with exclusive discounts, all the latest crafty sales and lots of fun things going on here at The Hollow. And if you enjoyed today's video, give us a thumbs up. I'll see you again tomorrow. Happy crafting everyone. Bye.